The sweat test is a composite of three separate sequential procedures. They are sweat induction, sweat collection, and sweat analysis. In this video, we'll be covering the first two sections, sweat induction and sweat collection. The following are the supplies that will be needed to perform sweat collection. Make sure that the groove on the plug matches up with the inducer. Connect the electrode plug to the sweat inducer and tighten the lock ring to secure the connection. Clean the electrodes with deionized water and wipe them dry with lint-free tissues or gauze before each use. The preferred location is the lower section of the flexor aspect of the forearm for high density of sweat glands. The selected site must be free of breaks, fissures, or observable abnormality in the skin. There should be no signs of inflammation. The area must be as wrinkle-free and hairless as possible. Do not place the electrode so close to the wrist that the tendons or bones are palpable just beneath the skin. Do not place electrodes across the chest or on opposite limbs at the same time. Clean the skin at selected sites to remove dirt, oil and loose dead cells to minimize the electrodes impedance of the skin. To do this, put on gloves, swab the area vigorously with alcohol, then clean the area with deionized water and wipe dry. Place a drop of water on the skin prior to the pyelogel disc attachment. This will help ensure uniform contact over the area and may reduce the possibility of a burn. Remove the pyelogel from the container. Pyelogel discs may be shipped at room temperature. Do not use pyelogel discs that have been frozen or that are cracked. Discs that have been frozen will crack or crumble easily with moderate flexing of the disc. Do not attach an electrode to the skin without a pyelogel disc. Place the discs on the electrodes. Place each strap so that the stud of the electrode protrudes from the rivet of the strap with the hook portion of the short tab facing upward, away from the skin, with the positive red electrode on the lower arm, closer to the wrist. Place the black electrode with pyelogel disc in the electrode above the red electrode. Secure the electrode firmly so that the gel surface is pressed flat against the skin. There should be moderate pressure to minimize discomfort, but do not tighten so much as to crush the gel disc. Press the control switch to the run position and hold momentarily until you hear a short beep. The sweat induction process takes five minutes. The illuminated light indicates that the current is flowing between the electrodes. During the sweat induction process, prepare the macroduct sweat collector by removing it from its package, and then thread a macroduct strap of suitable size through one slot so that the hook portion of the strap faces away from the macroduct collection surface. Do not touch the collection surface. It is best to leave the macroduct sweat collector in its sleeve until you're ready for use. The inducer proceeds automatically for approximately five minutes. At completion, an audible tone sounds briefly and the instrument turns itself off. After the inducer turns itself off, remove both electrodes, making careful note of the exact red electrode position on the limb. There normally is a distinct redness under both electrodes. Clean the stimulated skin and the surrounding area thoroughly with deionized water again and blot dry. Proceed to the next step immediately. 
Apply the concave surface of the macroduct collector precisely over the area of skin contacted by the pilar gel where the red electrode was located. Thread the unconnected end of the strap through the other slot of the collector and tighten the strap until the collector is firmly attached with the strap pressure pulling as evenly as possible from each end of the collector. The macroduct collector contains dye that will mark the sweat when it is being collected. Set a timer to leave the macroduct collector on for 30 minutes. The minimum amount of sweat for testing is 15 microliters. Some people may sweat more. If the person fills the macroduct collector before 30 minutes, the timer can be shut off and you may remove the sweat immediately. Attach a 1cc syringe to a blunt needle or use the sweat dispenser. If using a syringe, pull the syringe back to 0.5 milliliters. Leave the macroduct collector firmly attached to the skin while performing the following procedures. Put on gloves. Remove the protective transparent cover by inserting a pointed tip of the nipper into one of the cutout sections and prying upwards. Use the tip of the nipper to lift the outer end of the collector coil. Insert the blunt needle 2 to 3 millimeters into the free end of the tubing. You can touch the needle as long as you don't touch the tip. Uncoil the collector tube all the way to the center. Leave the center of the tube attached. Use the nipper to cut the tube at the base closest to the center of the collector. If the sweat did not fill the collector tube entirely, slowly pull back the sweat about one inch. If the sweat filled the tube entirely, do not pull back the sweat. Use the nipper to cut the end of the tube back about 0.5 centimeters to reduce the curl. Put the tip of the tube into the small sealable container provided with each kit. Slowly and gently expel the sweat into the container. Close the cap on the tube. You should hear a click when the tube is closed properly. Detach the collector body from the forearm. Retain the strap for future use. Discard the collector body. The sweat is now ready for analysis. The iontophoresis process does have a slight possibility of causing minor burns on the patient's forearm. Please refer to the Macroduct Supply Kit product insert for more information. This information should be shared with parents of the patient. All burns should be reported to Westcore as soon as possible. When the batteries are low, the low battery light comes on and an alarm sounds when the switch is pushed to run. There is a built-in open circuit alarm. This alarm sounds when current is not able to flow between each electrode. Make sure the electrodes are clean and unmarked. If necessary, clean or replace electrodes. Make sure electrodes are strapped securely to the patient's forearm. Refer to the manual for more troubleshooting procedures.